the land has fallen. The eastern territories all but belong to the orcs. I'll have my men ready to depart by noon. Don't bother. But what of the mines? Without adamantite... The blight would have engulfed the mines ere long. Besides, you already have your orders. Yes, my liege. The dark swallows more of the realm with each passing day. The land starved of the ether that gives it life. And as the fringes fade, the people flock to the mother crystals, desperate for their blessing. The war we wage for possession of that blessing, it breaks us from within, hastening us to our own destruction. And so you do what must be done. I unite the dominance, that we may bring an end to the strife and found a new order to see us unto tomorrow. The world must be restored, and I will see it so. You might have already had Sidolphus not betrayed us. Him again. Lust you still for his embrace? But... Of course not. My liege. I serve you, and you alone. I remember well the day you first entered these halls. Your pale hand pressed into his, as if he would never let go. That... that was a long time ago. Yours... is the only hand I need. Now... and always. Soon, my dear. Soon all will know whose hand it is that keeps them from falling into the darkness. Hold me, my leash. Never let me go. One of our sentries has failed to report, my lady. Your orders? Pull the men back inside the care, Geralt. He is here, then. Have them lead Sid and his little pet to the chapel. I shall entertain them there. <sighs> so you've come for me, after all. Apparently, this was part of the demo that I didn't manage to play before the game released. So, missed out on something, didn't I? So, Clive and Sid are sneaking into this castle, and well, this is where Benedicta is, we and we're getting. The dungeons. They may be holding the bearers there. Sound plan. As long as we keep ourselves on this side of the bars. We've seen a little bit more in here. God damn it. <laughs> They're all empty. And you're gonna give up. See I ah, no, I guess I can't. <laughs> Need some help. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hancock. Did you hear that? Unfortunately, yes. Good news, lads. So we see that Benedicta and Sid have something of a history together. We knew that before. But we're starting to get a little bit more of a kind of a perspective on what the antagonist of this story is. Or one of the antagonists, anyway, of this story is up to. Now, it seems to have wanted to go and unite all the dominants together for some purpose. And he's also concerned with the blight that seems to be spreading across the world. The kind of loss of magic power. So, you know, maybe he doesn't have... It might not be simple greed that's motivating him. This door only leads to more royalists. We'd better find another one. So you pick. How about a window? Bloody show off. I'm still not quite clear on the distinction between well, the bearers and the, the dominance. Right. I mean, it, it is obvious that the bearers have the ability to cast magic, and dominance have the ability to cast magic as well as turn into the summon creatures from this Final Fantasy series. So that's an obvious distinction, but they have to be related to each other in some way. Like, why is it that some people are capable of transitioning turning into these. And is it like a genetic thing? Because it seems to be, because Joshua seems to have been expected that somebody in that family would be able to turn into Phoenix. So it's got to be a genetic thing. But is it like just the case that all dominants are bearers, but perhaps they're bearers that were chosen by the summon creatures, the icons, chosen by the... A, a dominant is a bearer that is chosen by the icons to become a dominant. That might be it. I don't know. Sounds right, though, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll find out, I'm sure, at some point. Apparently, I wasn't moving here. <laughs> ah, but wait a sec. If the family member of, like, somebody in Clive's family was going to be chosen to be the Icon of Fire, is it the result of some sort of, like, genetic thing, or is it just that the Phoenix always just chose somebody from this family? That's... That's too many questions at this early port in the game. So we're going to have to wait around a little bit. Apparently I'm going to wait around a little bit to, uh, for <laughs> Clive to start moving again. There we go. Just to clarify, I played this, recorded it on the PlayStation 5's capture ability, and then transferred it to a PC where I'm recording the commentary. So I tend to be at least a little bit further along in the game before I start, like, before I record the commentary for any particular episode. So I have a little bit of foreknowledge, but not a whole hell of a lot. Like, I, for example, can say that aside from the videos that I shot regarding the demo, which was the first, what, two hours or so of this game, first couple episodes of this game series. I've reached this point, and this will in fact be the last... Um, God, what am I talking about? Let me clarify. <laughs> 
since I've recorded the gameplay before I record the commentary, I tend to play further into the game than any point in which I'm recording the commentary. Now, aside from the first couple of episodes, I played up until this point before I started recording any commentary. So, I gotta get back to actually playing the game in order to in order to uh, continue. Oh, fucked that guy up, didn't I? <laughs> Chump. It's a weird kind of a layout to a castle. These poor sods didn't know what hit them. Benedict is coming across as a very brutal individual. But she also seems to attach herself to the people that seem to that she perceives as being the most powerful. So all this bloody running after them. So she you saw her in the beginning of this episode. I I assume just got done having sex with this uh, Barnabas guy. And she also was seen having relations with that big fella that turned in the Titan. So, like, it, uh, I would assume that, well, Titan, the guy who turned into Titan is definitely a dominant. This other guy trying to unite the dominance is probably one as well. So maybe, oh, and she has a history with Sid. He said that, like, her hand was planted in his, so I assume that they had some sort of relationship, sexual relationship, probably. So she seems to be always... Um, she's. I, I'm, I'm blanking on what the term is, but like a a woman who goes and just sort of status climbs or kind of a social climber kind of thing. But she's hooking up with the people who she perceives to have the most power for her own gains. Now she may talk to this guy as though she is like a loyalist or a true believer in his cause but it's possible that she just perceives him to be the, the one with the most power so she uh, like aligns herself with him and at one point that person was Sid so she was with Sid and then she was with that guy who turned to the Titan I'm blanking on his name but we did see a um, cutscene that happened later that she was basically saying, like, oh, yeah, you, the, the guy who was Titan, that he had somehow, like, failed, probably failed in his fight to defeat Shiva that we saw in the early parts of the game. If he didn't manage to defeat Shiva, then Benedict is kind of like, like, oh, well, I don't want you anymore. I'm moving on to this other guy. Oh, apparently enemies can block. <laughs> The game, it gives you, I've mentioned this before, but the game goes and gives you a lot of sort of tools to make it easier in a way with these kind of rings that you can equip that make blocking and parrying easier. Fortunately, it kind of ruins the fun of the combat a little bit. So eventually, during this episode anyway, I figure that out and I shut it off and the game gets a lot more fun for me. The only way is the chapel. Then Great Grieger must have plans for us. What the hell happened here? Little light for prayer, isn't it? Do I seem so desperate as to grovel at the feet of a false god? <laughs> I was waiting for you. Not for too long, I hope. All this for a midnight chat. Well, let's chat then. Where are the men and women you took from Lost Wing? 
You mean where's the dominant? Well, we shall be requiring his services indefinitely. Come back to me, Sidolphus. I need you. Think of all the things we can create together. The world that we can build. You need me. <laughs> Your king needs me. I'm all for building a new world. Just not his. That bastard's dreams are as twisted as his promises are false. And I want no part of him. King Barnabas saved you, and this is how you speak of him. Have you no shred of loyalty? What? To a leader who'd use me? Like he uses you. You know nothing of me, Sidolphus. You're right. I don't know who you are anymore. Or what you want. I only know what you used to say. That you were tired of running. That you just wanted to be free. Free of it all. You weren't lying to me then, so what changed? What made you think you had to sacrifice who you were to get what you wanted? Sacrifice? I use my talents to my advantage, and you would tell me there is shame in that? If there's no shame, then why do you feel so sorry for yourself? A rousing speech, Lord Commander. I was a fool to believe you might have changed. The only person I feel sorry for is you! I can't do this anymore. If you would stand between our leash and his dream, then you leave me no choice. Goodbye, Sidolphus. Stand back, Clive. Finish them. Well, Sid, at least it's not three against one. I guess I was a little bit wrong there. She does seem to be something of a true believer in God, that guy's name. I forget what it is. <laughs> Trying to get Sid to join their cause and seeming like she cares about it so I guess I was reading her wrong there also um, she's not taking Clive seriously now Sid somebody that she knows is a dominant so she goes and she unleashes that power on him to feed him and once that's done she leaves these two I don't know what the hell to call them to deal with to deal with uh, Clive here. Of course, she doesn't know that he's a dominant himself. He doesn't know either. So she's underestimating him here. Of course, he's not, like, turning into Ypres or anything like that. So, of course, he, it's, he's not demonstrating his power. Stagger meter. <laughs> there we go. 
a lot of these fights seem to have quite a bit of spectacle to them. Like, they they all seem to be, like, the boss battles in particular seem to be sort of handcrafted for their arena. To It's not like, um... I guess it's a thing with modern game design that they have to, in order to make each thing feel special and each thing feel unique, it can't just be the mechanics or the design of the enemy. You have to design the environment to sort of fill it in and make everything unique and special. Oh, they're both dead. Oh, almost dead anyway. Almost got this, right? <laughs> I think there's a second phase to this fight. I guess this is, you could consider this to be something like a mini-boss. Because it's definitely not the boss of this dungeon. There are a couple of mini-bosses in this, in fact. This game seems to love its mini-bosses. Sid had also... Sid had also mentioned that... Oh, she regened her health. <laughs> Sid had also mentioned that... Benedicta used to be a different person. Perhaps, well, I don't know. I've seen some sort of contradicting information about the way dominants are treated in this world. And it's probably a result of the different societies, the different kingdoms and all that kind of stuff that exists. Now, where Clive and, and Joshua were from, the dominant is revered. Also seems to be the case where the guy who turns into Titan where he came from, his dominance have quite a bit of uh, political power. But it's definitely not everywhere that that is the case. Like Jill, for example, turns into Shiva. Jill is a dominant, but she was effectively a slave. She was forced to turn into Shiva to fight with those, um, those sort of like Norsemen kind of people. So it's possible that in her past, uh, Benedicta was somebody who came up in a society that didn't respect the dominance or treated them poorly or something like that. So that would inform her kind of attitude. Now, once she escaped from that and she got a taste of power, she wanted more. She wanted more, not just out of greed or desire for her own power, but sort of as a sense of, like, self-protection. If she's powerful, then, like, nobody can treat her the way that she was treated when she was younger. That seems to be where they're going with that, anyway. Oh, won that fight. You know, this menu that pops up after these boss battles kind of kills the momentum of the scene, unfortunately. Sid, are you all right? Do I look all right? Benedicta will be on her way to collect the Dominant, if she hasn't already. You can't afford to let them leave. Remember, she has wings, you don't. What about you? Before or after I catch my breath. Sorry. Come on, Toggle. 